So this is what we're all looking for, right? The ball was here, my divot is on that side of the ball and my target is over there. So isn't that what we're all looking for? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hit ball first, then ground. And you'll notice that thinking about this is not where it's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot easier than this. Stay tuned. So right out of the gate, let's talk about the mat here that I just showed you, which is really, really cool. It deserves a little, a little bit of merit. You notice the, they call it AccuStrike, A-C-U strike. So you'll see the, the link in the bottom here in my video. And notice there's, you place the ball there and you want to see the, the, the divot come out on that side. So you notice that the mat is a nice velour mat. So it's, it offers very, very little resistance. So when you place the ball there and you get ready to hit your shot, you'll notice if you ground the club, you'll probably see a mark right there. When you swing through and you'll know when you hit a really proper strike. So it gives you a couple of things you'll notice that the, the grass starts to get cut basically at the mid portion of the ball. And so the ball is right here and you notice the grass begins to get cut just as you're, you know, you, you, you actually hit the ball first and then you cut the grass just below the ball and you can see that the majority of the divot is on that side. And that to me felt like a very solid strike and because, you know, with the 8-iron, I just hit that 168 carry, uh, which is a really good strike for me. And so notice the, uh, the way that they fasten it, too. You want to have a, a really a good place to work with this. It's a very nice mat. So you either have a regular mat that you're going to peg some tees on, like the real field golf mats you can peg tees in to hold it in place. Uh, because the bottom is, uh, is, is just your very basic rubber bottom right here and it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any grooves. So if I, if I were to make an observation as one of the cons of this thing, you want to have it a lot more like this true shoe. Notice the ridges there have hooks in them. So they're actually hooking uh, from front to back at the front of the shoe and they're actually hooking from back to front at the back of the shoe. And then you've got these ridges in between that make this very, very grippy. So I can't move that way and I have a hard time moving that way as well. So that's what, uh, you know, the, the beauty of that design in the true shoes, I could actually see at the bottom of this mat here, right here. And that would be very, um, a very valid way to, uh, to go about it. So seek, uh, golf shoe manufacturers for the rubber sole on this thing and I think you've got a, a real winner. Now, as far as the rest is concerned, so in order for you to get this really nice strike on the other side of the ball towards the target, what would be a really cool task? Because if the ball is your target, for most of you have a tendency to hit the ground before the ball, that's because you're trying to hit the golf ball itself and you're making the golf ball itself the target and so when you do that you throw everything at the ball and it's very easy to hit the ground first so what we're looking for is a really awesome little task notice these are important tools that we use in our golf schools they're called grass whips so they're designed to cut grass, just like your golf club. So when I'm cutting through grass, there is continuity to the motion. So let's say when you're cutting grass, you don't cut just one little blade of grass. You're actually cutting a whole section. So let's say I had a little section of grass here that I wanted to cut, cut with my grass whip and I'm gonna basically breeze through both of these tees with my grass whip. So here we go. Okay, so notice both tees disappear. Now, if I had a golf ball set up on the first tee, see that? 
even if I had two golf balls set up. So I'll actually put two down for you. So there are two dandelions in disguise. So if I cut through both, now my eyes are not on the golf balls themselves because the brain's got to come up to hit the golf balls. My eyes are actually on the grass here between the leading edge of the club and the tee. And I know that the tees are there, so my, my action is going to be through both tees. So here we go. So notice I went through both tees and both golf balls fell to the ground. Now, let's examine that a little bit closer here with this mat, okay? So if I had a grass whip and I was cutting through the stem of this dandelion, let's look at this in slow motion. So I'm going back, coming back down. I'm getting ready to cut. So my brain goes to the ground, uses the ground to get my body out of the way. So notice how my hands are coming through first. This is something that is built in to your machine. When I'm throwing, the elbow comes through first, then the hand, then the fingers. It's the same thing. Here's that extra long finger that I have. So I'm coming down, hands come through first, then the shaft of the tool, then the heel of the tool, and then notice there's where I start, I start cutting. So I'm cutting through the stem of the dandelion. Notice where I'm cutting. You can see the blade is, you know, shaving on this side. Now, the golf club is a perfect grass cutting tool as well. And so if I bring that back, see how nice that is? Put the ball back in. So now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just focusing on the sole of the club cutting through the stem of this dandelion in disguise. So I gather, now I go, go to my weight shift, I'm clearing my hips, I'm not thinking about it, this is what's happening naturally when I'm trying to cut through something. So I'm getting there, notice my hands, then the shaft, then the heel of the club. Notice the ball has to meet the face of the club before I cut the stem. The stem is in the center of that ball. So the simple task of cutting through a dandelion stem in the direction of your target and you'll hit the ball first. If your focus is on make sure you hit the ball, then you're opening up a big can of worms at releasing toward the ground. So I get back to my task and you remember what we just did with the T's? Imagine the two T's would then be placed. When I'm cutting through a stem, have a look at one of my videos entitled Fencing for Power, and you'll understand what it means to be through something. Or Throwing the Club, so Throw the Club, Sean Clement. You're gonna love that video. It's an oldie but goodie. So if I am cutting through something, my brain senses continuity and peak speed is actually going to be on this side towards my target and not there toward the ball. The peak speed can't be at the bottom. You can't make the ball your target. If you make the ball your target, that's like saying, go to your car. You're going, what the hell am I going to the car for? It's because you're going somewhere, aren't you? So if you're, you're not going to go to your car if you've got no place to go. Same thing. Ball needs a target. The only way to gut the ball over there is to put it in the air with, you know, a nice velocity. And the only way to put a ball in the air is to cut grass. So I see my dandelion stem and I'm going to whip through my dandelion stem in the direction of my target. So I, I gather and whip through the stem. Here we go. So, again, there's the divot on the proper side. Notice how I had a T here and a T there. I'm cutting through this section of grass. So when your focus is on the right thing, then all this is going to take care of itself. So you can see they put two lines right here to simulate those two T's that you have. But if you put your attention too much on the mat, then you won't be able to get through it you want to whip through the dandelion stem and towards your target. In the next video, you'll see a nice part two of this video. I'm going to show you another different analogy 
that's going to really help you uh, uh, see things differently, see more through the ball instead of at the ball. And uh, it'll make a great difference. It'll be a, the difference between being a carpenter and a gardener, but the end result is gonna be ball in the air towards target well struck. That's what we're looking for. <laughs>